Another new night, another new set of rope marks, and time continually running out more and more so for Miku. Hey everybody, and welcome back to more Fatal Frame. Well, we somehow got kicked out of that room we were in before, so we might as well go ahead and see if we can't investigate more so in there. Maybe there are more clues waiting in there from Mafuya. Seems a bit more calm than it was when we previously visited. You can also find a hidden ghost over here where a Manakata's body laid. Seeing his last few tortured expressions, I guess, before he was smothered in those outreaching arms. As we head further down, we are attacked by a new set of ghosts. That's right, it's not just a single ghost this time around, it's actually a trio of... Actually, not very threatening ghosts. These guys are called the People Killed. And in all honesty, they don't have a lot of life. And they don't do a lot of damage, and they don't really have anything special about them, other than that they attack in numbers. But you do see here that you can actually capture multiple ghosts at the same time in the viewfinder. Uh, in this case, I actually did manage to get a triple shot. Just like that, the threat is already taken care of. Also, I think I got quite a bit of points in that particular scuffle. Yeah, I think I got about 10 or 11,000, so that means I can actually go ahead and buy another bonus function. So, I already bought what I consider to be the best bonus function, but I do want to show off the other ones. Um, hmm. I think I might go with C... Yeah, I think I'll go see. Well, I'll be showing that off soon enough. But the tremors will continue throughout this particular night as things seem to be going a little bit worse and worse in regards to the psychic structural integrity of this place. Even though we have come to a dead end and our progression with following Mafuyu has been blocked, we do find something that might elucidate more about what just happened in regards to this calamity. Yeah, the strangling ritual that we had heard of before didn't really go off as planned, and something called Malice escaped and killed 1,300 people. So I took a bit too long in exploring this little passageway here. I did spawn a random ghost. Nothing really too much to be worried about, other than the fact that this particular environment really doesn't lend itself well to combat. But it's just our reoccurring friend, the Broken Neck Woman. I decided to show off a C really quickly just to show off what it does. As you can tell, it just makes the ghost a lot more obvious. 
But in addition, whenever we do use our special power, and it actually is on a ghost, it will give something of a point bonus. In that case, you did see that we got a fine shot bonus. But I think we should go ahead and get out of here as, well, we don't want any more random ghosts to pop, out, pop up on us in here. But with another helpful hint from Kyrie, we do see that there is now something waiting where Monikata's body was. And if we investigate, we actually do find another piece of his writing. This is actually going to direct us to where we need to go to next. You may recall that there was a little building that we couldn't get into back in the Cherry Blossom Atrium. And it seems that that might be where the rope maidens were being kept. So it seems like a good as place as any to be heading. But that does mean we do have something of a long trek back out of the demon's mouth. Thankfully, at this point, we will no longer have to be heading back down to the demon's mouth. We actually have done everything we need to do down here, so savor these lovely, lovely ladder climbing animations. So as we head along the outside perimeter here, we will find that there is an item waiting for us. Nothing too amazing, it's just more Type 14 film. But we're still doing pretty good on the Type 37, so I'll be sticking with that for right now. Here we do run into another brand new ghost. This guy is pretty sneaky. Yeah, this particular ghost is called the Floating Face. We actually won't be seeing too much of him, he just becomes a random ghost after this point. And while he doesn't really have a corporeal form, He's also just not really that easy or, or he's not really that hard or interesting. He's just a floating cloud with a face in it. Not really strong, not really that much health, and a really large shutter chance. But, well, we should just keep on continuing. Oh. Actually, you know, C just really isn't that useful, so I'm just going to go back to Paralyze for right now. I think we get the general idea of what C does, and it's very limited usage. seems that something is amiss in the rubble room. Someone has stuck a talisman on the door leading out. But yet again, what we need to take a picture of to get rid of the talisman is actually right behind us. I 
to whether this was just their efforts to give the player a few additional points or maybe additional backstory. It seems kind of arbitrary. As this is a new knight, we actually have a new ghostly presence to follow around. Before we follow him though, there is a new item waiting for us to pick up in the burial, burial room here. But we should continue on as per normal in the game and just keep on following our ghostly host around. Yeah, while this night does not really give any major environment changes, it does lead into some spooky moments. Also, this door that was previously blocked by a broken lock now seems to be reacting to our camera. And it shows us an altar that we have seen before. You may recall that is the room where we picked up the Mask of Reflection, so that's actually not too far away. Before we head over there though, yet again, there is a little hidden away item behind the column here. And especially now that we have all these bonus functions, the Spirit Stones will actually be getting quite a bit of use. We have definitely seen that particular masked figure before. Saw him in the flashback with the blinded woman being blinded. But we also saw a bit of a flash of him during the opening little cinematic for this particular chapter. But the altar room where we need to go is actually right behind this door. See that a lot of shortcuts have been opening up as we have been progressing through the different nights. And we notice that there is a slight change with the altar here, in that there are now these four ceremonial ropes. We'll just go ahead and pick those up, along with a helpful document to tell us just what we have to do with the ropes. Yet again, it's much like the little Buddha statue, pu statue puzzle we had this all back in the shrine on the hill. All we have to do is bind the limbs in the correct order. And the limbs we have to bind are actually on these very large broken Buddha statues.
with all the ropes now in place, we do get access to the item we came here looking for. And say hello to the head of the Himuro family. Yeah, this particular ghost that we have seen before is the head of the clan and is an extremely dangerous ghost. As he is the only ghost in the game that attacks on some means other than choking. Yeah, as you can tell, he is equipped with a long range katana. And while not exactly a fast ghost, he does teleport around a lot, making it somewhat difficult to get a clear bead on him. Also, as you may imagine from him having a sword, he actually has a much longer range than most of the ghosts. So this is actually a good fight to show off Paralyze. He also has an additional attack that uh, I think we might be seeing later on as, well, you can probably assume that won't be the last time we'll be running into him. But we have been able to accrue even more points, which means that I'll go ahead and unlock another bonus function. Even though search does have pretty good usage, I think I'll go ahead and go with slow. It's pretty much a weaker version of Paralyze, it just slows down the enemy other than, rather than locking them in place. But we'll go ahead and return to the Cherry Atrium. What's waiting for us inside? Mm. Nothing really, just a mysterious looking box. Might as well go ahead and investigate it. Nothing really in the box except more hints from the folklorist. We find that merely getting into the shrine was the first step in a very long process necessary to get down into the moon well. It seems we have to acquire the symbol from the four rope pullers and show the family master's symbol. Problem is that well, we can only assume that all of the rope pullers are long dead. But since we have some connection to the other world, that means that we know what we have to do. Yep, 
Yeah, by taking pictures of these little four-button mechanisms around the box itself, we are able to figure out that uh, there are some specific locations we're going to need to revisit in the mansion. Now, all of these should be very familiar, but... I don't know, it might be a bit difficult for your first playthrough to really understand or remember where some of these places are from these particular pictures. But the game was actually nice enough to show us in the intro cinematic for this particular chapter exactly where we need to go, along with these hint hinting pictures. Actually, from this final picture that we take, there is actually one location right outside. So, since we are adjacent to our first location, we might as well head out there and see just what is waiting for us. But the first thing I want to do is remember that I have missed another hidden ghost. Now we have quite a few interactions with this particular tree here, especially involving hanged women. And we find yet another person that we have fought previously. But let's go ahead and investigate this stone mound. Poor girl. It's too bad, but it must be sealed. After those ghostly words, we do have our first fight with a headless priest. While not exactly difficult, as they are pretty slow, they do have some rather surprisingly nasty attacks if you do let them get them off. Especially as their shutter chances are a bit oddly timed, but we see one of their many dangerous attacks. They summon a homing wisp that actually has quite a long lifespan. You may be wondering why they're called headless. Well, occasionally their heads will pop off. But for defeating that headless priest, we do get the first symbol. We may notice now that there is a new shiny item waiting for us. And this is actually some words from possibly the priest we had just killed. It talks about Kyrie acting strangely around some young guest. Hmm. Important to the plot? Could very well be so. But I think this is a good stopping point for right now. Hopefully you'll join me as we take out the rest of the Headless Priest next time.